What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I wanna share a quick tip on how I like to use the ghosting effect inside the Blender Compositor to add a more organic and realistic look to any lights I have composited into a live action shot. The reason this technique works in my opinion is because ghosting and lens flares happen in the real world when we're photographing something. So it just adds a little bit more of a photographic quality to the CG elements that you're adding to your scene when they happen to be a certain brightness level. Recently, I uploaded this visual effects breakdown of this abandoned street here that we've composited some of our horde add-on zombies as well as this Volkswagen vehicle here in the foreground and you can see that we've lit up the vehicle headlights in the foreground here as well and I've just done that by making a basic emission material for those headlights and then keyframing them on and off to create that flashing effect and I've rendered out an emission pass for these lights but without adding certain glare effects to it it still doesn't have that same punch so you can see if I just remove our glare effects, which includes our ghosting effect, as well as some fog glow effects here, if we just overlay the emission pass of our lights on top of our live action footage, we get something like this, which could work. However, using these glare and specifically the ghosting effect helps, in my opinion, to blend in the shot quite a bit better. So you can see that now, if we start adding in these effects just to the emission pass of our lights here, we get this nice flaring. And then of course we can adjust, you know, some of the iterations here as well. So I'm going to to show you guys how to do this on a separate more simple project in this video really quick so to do that I'll just uh, create a new project here and let's get started all right so the first thing I'm going to do I'll just delete everything in our scene here and I do want to switch to our cycles rendering engine so I'll switch the render engine to cycles and I'll just adjust a few render settings here while we're in this tab I'll switch the render samples to maybe 20 for the sake of this tutorial I'll select the seed stopwatch and for film we'll make it transparent so we can render with an alpha channel I do want to add an HDRI for lighting up anything we add to our scene so I'll go to our world properties tab here under color I'll go to environment texture and then I'll open up an HDRI here that I have under my downloads and for this example, I'm going to use one of our Light Architect uh, lighting assets that we use to pre-visualize cinematography setups inside of Blender. Um, so I'll just go here to, I think probably we want to use one of our spotlight units. So maybe an 18K HMI. So I'll go ahead and select that. And now we have a nice rigged light that we can use as an example for this effect. And I'll just kind of raise it up here and uh, you know rotate it, do something like this. And you'll see if we go into rendered view, what we're getting so far, we have a spotlight within our lighting unit here. And then also the actual lens of this 18K is an emission material as well. So we're going to use this bright spot to add the ghosting and glare effect to. So now what I'll do, since we want to render this out, I'm going to press shift A. We'll add a nice camera into our scene. We'll just pull this back. I'll view through the camera to rotate this up, pull it back. And I'll just find a nice way we can render this. Something like this should be pretty good. And now we're pretty much set up here. I do want to render out an emission pass so we can isolate the glow on our lens itself and only add the glare to that part of the render. So to do that, I'll go to our view layer properties here and I'll export a combined beauty pass. And then I'll scroll down here and export an emission pass here as well. And now we'll have access to that data in our compositing process. All right, so now let's render out an image and we'll get into our node compositing process. And I'll show you guys how to create this effect. All right, so this is our render denoised here. I'll go ahead and close our render window here and we'll go to our compositing tab and I'll click on use nodes and I'll just create a little bit of space here for us. I'll press shift A. We want to add an output viewer node and we'll just connect our image output to this viewer so we can view our final composite here. All right, so our render is looking okay right now, but it's definitely not looking super photographic. And there are obviously a variety of things we can change here to create a more photographic result. But in this video, we're just going to be talking about that ghosting and glare effect. The simplest way to utilize this ghosting effect is to just press Shift A, we'll go to Filter, add a glare node, and we'll switch this from streaks. You can see we're getting those streaks right now. Um, but we wanna switch this from streaks to ghost. And now you can see we have something that's a little bit like a lens flare, and we can sort of change the iterations to create the appearance that there are different layers of glass in between our render and the camera sensor. So by increasing this, we can create more ghosting effects, like these are separate pieces of glass in our lens. And if you want just like a standard lens flare, we can dial this back all the way to two. And now this is sort of just like your standard lens flare that might be the effect you're going for. We can also change the quality of this effect. So I'm going to go with high, but um, you don't always have to go with high. Sometimes, you know, you want a little bit of a blurred look on your ghosting. 
so that can be nice as well. And you can also adjust the color module, which kind of gives you some chromatic aberration and some color effects on the actual flare. Like each different piece of glass has a slightly different quality to it. So that's one effect you can kind of play with. And finally, remember that for these glare nodes, the effect is only gonna show up on pixels that are brighter than the threshold value. So if you're not getting any effect from this node, you actually wanna bring down this threshold. And now you can see we're getting a much greater effect. However, you don't wanna bring this down to zero most of the time, unless you have isolated the part that you wanna add the glare to already. For example, if we bring this threshold down to zero, all of a sudden we're getting ghosting on all of our image rather than just the bright spot. So you can play around with the threshold to control where this effect is added. Now, one of the things I like to do with this effect, so I don't have to mess around with the threshold quite as much, is I like to export an emission pass of my render and then only use the glare effect on that emission pass. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what I mean here. This is our emission pass that we have exported. And as you can see here, now we've isolated the part of our image that is emitting light, which is the actual light bulb of our light source. And now what we can do is we can add the glare effect on just this part of the image. And we can now adjust you know, the iterations and the effects that I just showed you guys. And then what we can do is we can press Shift A, add an alpha over node here. And we can actually combine our original image Actually, instead of using an alpha over node, I'm going to use a mix node instead so we can better overlay our glare. So I'll press shift A, add a mix node, and I'll delete our alpha over node. And I just want to connect our beauty pass as well as our emission pass to our mix node. And then I'll switch our blend mode to add and now we're getting a little bit of flaring. Now, one thing I might do in this specific instance to increase the size of our flaring here, in addition to, of course, we could duplicate this glare node over and over again uh, before we add it on top of our image. But one thing I might do is just create a bigger emission material for our actual light source here. So what I can do is I'll just go back to layout mode and I will select our beam reflector as well. And then I'll just change the surface of this to emission. And now if we render this out, you'll see that we have a larger emission source that we can add that ghosting effect to. So I'll go ahead and close this and now if we go to compositing you can see that our flares are much bigger which is a nice effect and now of course we can increase the iterations if we like to create more ghosting and then one thing i like to do is actually combine the ghosting effect with other glare effects so if we press shift d duplicate this guy maybe add a fog glow before it with a small size you can see that we're adding fog glow and then the ghosting effect is being added on top of that so it's an even greater lens flare effect. And we can do this again with a streak glare node, like so, maybe decrease the streaks down to one. So we just have one streak on our light source. Maybe bring down the quality to low so it's a bigger streak. And now you can see we're getting some nice flaring right at the light source, which is a cool effect. And these nodes are affecting the glare of our entire image. So I can bring down the iterations to two to make it that simple glare effect, or we could dial up these iterations to create something much more intense. Personally, I'm a fan of two or three iterations on this, but you can play around with this effect to create the look you're going for. And it's a very simple way you can add a little bit more realism to your renders. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content, and I'll see you next time.